don't pick the man who isn't giving you the time of day. Okay. I can't tell you how many women I have counseled and talked to where she, you know, he's just lead. He, he got this. He got like a group of girls. Right. And they're all following him around, just hoping that he's she's going to be the Not one. Literally. But like he's talking to this one, texting. You this text one, each and other. Everything's in the friend zone. You but go have coffee. They're kind of. To be and honest. she's waiting, saying, oh, but I think he likes me, but he keeps saying this, and I know that we're such a good fit for each other. Listen, if right. he wanted to make you his wife, he would have done, done He it. would. Yeah. He, men will let you know. And so if he is not pursuing you, just leave him alone. Mm, 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 Go, You know, you are, your worth is far more than rubies. Mm. And the man that's for you, he's going to know it, and he is going to hunt you down, chase you down, girl. Mm. You don't have to worry about whether he likes you or not. Mm, he's mm, going to mm. let you know. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Hi, Happy everyone. Day. Man, we're so pumped to have you joining us for season number two. Of course, another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Tabitha. 24 years of marriage. We want to share with you our good, bad, ugly, and everything in between. We're so pumped to have you with us on today. And today, for you single people out there, single ladies say, hey, fellas say, ho. We got five <laughs> qualities that to look for in a husband. All and we right. And help you not make mistakes. Praise God. Oh, that's going to be good. <laughs> but to those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. We're so glad that you found us. We always pray that the Lord would send us people who really need this, uh, really need the information that we're putting out there. So we just pray that this is going to be a blessing to you. Yeah. The goal of our podcast, of course, is to help you grow closer to God and also closer to the people that God mm -hmm. has placed in your life. And so we believe that we're going to share some things with you that can help accomplish that goal. We also have a better marriage boot camp. How many of you all want a better marriage? Maybe you're married, you want a better marriage. We believe we have this boot camp that can help bad marriages become good, good marriages become great, and great marriages go to out of this world. Mm. But it's going to require an investment. Anything that's worth anything requires an investment. And what I tell people all the time is you're going to pay now or pay later. A lot of people are paying through divorce and alimony and child support. And I don't believe that's God's best. I believe if that's where you are, it's okay. His grace is sufficient. Absolutely. But we would rather give you tools up front so that he can elevate your marriage so that you don't have to pay later. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make that investment, you can go jump over to our website, go to our show notes. The link is in there. You can find some more information about this boot camp, which is a 90 day journey where we want to be your marriage coaches and your marriage mentors That's right. to help your marriage get better. Check it out today and share with us your life change stories. All right. And so we're ready to jump into it today, everybody. Five qualities to look for in a husband. And today is really equipping single ladies of what to look for in a possible spouse. Mm. But not only that, it's also going to equip single men what they need to develop to be the spouse that the ladies are looking for. All Come right. On. So this is not just the ladies podcast. This is for ladies and men. Five qualities to look for in a husband. All right. Now, we've been married for 24 years, sweetheart. Uh huh. We've been able to speak to a lot of couples around mm -hmm. the world and uh, thousands of couples, thousands of, uh, upon thousands of couples, we were able to talk to and in, impact and hear from. And um, the divorce rate is 50%, mm. okay? Meaning that half of the people who say I do, at some point in their life will say I don't, 50% of the people. Um, and, there, and there's all kinds of different reasons why the divorce rate is there, mm -hmm. all right? Um, however, what if, we could give people the right qualities to look for before they get into the marriage. I wonder mm -hmm. how much that could affect that rate. Yeah. Meaning that many people are getting married because they did not know what to look for in a spouse. Mm. They didn't know what to look for in a husband. They didn't know look, what to look for in a wife. And they said, I do to somebody that really didn't measure up. They wasn't wifey material. They wasn't husband material, but they didn't even know what they should be looking for. The point of this podcast is that we feel like we can save people drama. Mm -hmm. We feel like we can give you characteristics, attributes, Ooh. and things that you can look for so that you can have a measuring stick to see if you really want to sign up uh -huh. for this lifelong commitment with this man or this woman. And so that's what we're doing this for. 
I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, you can, there are definitely red flags that you can look out for. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's definitely some, you know, signs that you would say that, you know, that are leaving, leading you in the direction toward like, you know, godly character, godly behavior, yeah. you know, looking at their family and friends and all of those things. Well, well definitely. We, well, can we start there? Uh -huh. All right. So if you were to advise um, a woman mm -hmm. and say, hey, sweetheart, when you, when you, when you find a man, mm -hmm. this is what you're looking for. Ooh. What would be your advice? What are the characteristics that you would tell her to um, look for in a husband? I think I would definitely be looking for a man who has a relationship with God. Okay. And for me personally, I want him to have a good relationship with God. Right. If you just got saved yesterday, I'm going to give you a little minute. <laughs> I'm gonna say, you know, maybe I'll date you, but right. I, you definitely, we're not getting engaged. We yeah. might just, because you need a minute to grow. How much time you think he needs? As much as time uh -huh. as he needs to mature in the things of God, give uh -huh. him you know, times to, uh, I don't have an answer to that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. But I say, you know, at least a year or two or three or four. <laughs> <laughs> Until you see some fruit. Maturity, spiritual maturity. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying. I would look for Number one, spiritual okay. maturity. Okay. Um, I think number two, I would probably look for um, integrity. Okay. character. Uh -huh. Um, so I would probably look at things like job, you uh -huh. know, like how, how long, what kind of, do you have a business? Do you have a job? Uh -huh. How long have you had the job? Do you jump around from job to job to job? Do you go from business to business to business? Um, you know, what's your relationship with your mother, your dad, your sisters, your brothers? How do you talk about your best friends? How do you talk about your pastors? Uh -huh. Are you plugged into church? What church do you go to? What do you believe? Right. Like I, these are the questions that I'm asking. Okay. All right. Anything else? What um, other attributes are you oh, looking yeah. for? Oh, yeah. I think I, I would keep on going. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would also look for, I need somebody who's going to be my friend. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think physical attraction is definitely a major. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely need to be physically attracted to them. Okay. Yeah. So that's one as well. But then also, um, beyond physical attraction is... I need this person to be my friend. I don't think people realize in marriage that as husband and wife, you have to be friends. Yeah. You have to actually like one another, not just like one another's bodies and what you look like and mm -hmm. not just have physical attraction, but you actually have to like one another. Right. Because once you get married for a little bit, the physical attraction <laughs> It's gonna. It's not gonna get old, but it ain't gonna be the same. Nah, it ain't you, gonna be the same. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, one hundred percent. It's not gonna be the same. Yeah. So you better like him. Yeah. You better, you know, make sure that he likes you. Can you? So when we got married, uh -huh. or you know, when when we started dating, the thing that I think I hold high mm -hmm. about you, well, those things. Number one, mm -hmm. we met be over God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I gave you my number because you said you went to the same church as me. Mm -hmm. So that was like, and even though I was very spiritually immature. Okay. Yeah. We didn't know so, nothing. It's a horrible story. It, yeah. We'll, we'll we're not going to spare later. you the details, yeah. but I'm, I'm telling you, but still God was there. God was there. Okay. So, and then we we're in a nightclub, but God was there after I heard Jesus after, us. after I heard, I turned my head cause you was about to get a fake mm -hmm. number. Okay. Mm -hmm. After you told me about God mm -hmm. I and I was intrigued, I turned my head. Then I looked at you and said, Said, oh snap, he looks good. <laughs> I listened to, and then after you I recognized that I was physically attracted to you, mm -hmm. um, I started listening to you. Uh -huh. You were looking at me in my eyes, you weren't looking at me in my chest, you weren't looking at you know other I was trying not you to. were looking to at me in my <laughs> eyes. You were articulate, uh -huh. you know. So a lot of you know, guys would be like, you know, that yo baby yo and can't finish a sentence and you know, rambling on or mm -hmm. on. I'm like Please, you know, I like I ain't got time for that. I need somebody who can articulate, a, you know, a time. sentence. Nobody got time and so for that. that was something else that was high on my list. Like, OK, you were intelligent. Mm -hmm. You could carry a conversation with me. And so anyway, I know I, I feel like what I'm, would you tell her to look for? Though I would tell her to now. look for that friendship. Okay. That's what I mean by friendship. OK. Can you carry a conversation with him mm -hmm. that is intelligent? Can you, you know, do you like the same things? Can you, you know, you don't have to be um, identical, but uh -huh. like, so like there are some action movies that you like uh -huh. that I don't really like, I, you know, but to this day for the last, you know, 25 years, we've been married and in the theaters, what do we do if we watch like Mission Impossible? I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm closing my eyes on certain parts because I'm like, the car is going to blow up. Now, I don't necessarily like those things, but there are a lot of other things that I do like, but I don't mind. I can go to see the Mission impossible movie with you. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Look for likability. Can this be your best friend for the rest of your life? Okay. Anything else? 
I mean, you poured out. I'm on pouring those. out. I mean, you poured I'm out. I'm going girl. for it. I you can go. I can. I, no, okay, so those details. those are uh -huh. some things <laughs> that you can look for. Now, I can give you some things that you can run from. Okay, give me those. Then. Okay, I want to hear. Them. I want to give you some red flags. Okay, okay, so you you don't want don't pick the man who isn't giving you the time of day. Okay. I can't tell you how many women I have counseled and talked to where she, you know, he's just leading. He, he got this. He got like a group of girls. Right. And they're all following him around, just hoping that he's she's going to be the Not one. Literally. But like he's talking to this one, texting. You this text one, each and other. Everything's in the friend zone. You but go have coffee. They're kind of. Pressed, to be and honest. she's waiting, saying, oh, but I think he likes me, but he keeps saying this, and I know that we're such a good fit for each other. Listen, if right. he wanted to make you his wife, he would have done, done he it. He would. Yeah. He, men will let you know. And so if he is not pursuing you, just leave him alone. Mm, 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 Go, mm. You know, you are, your worth is far more than rubies. Mm. And the man that's for you, he's going to know it, and he is going to hunt you down, chase you down, girl. Mm. You don't have to worry about whether he likes you or mm, not. Mm, he's mm. going to let you know. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, so I, I would say that is probably my number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then not necessarily in order, but I would definitely, I think a lot of ladies go for the person who is popular mm -hmm. or the person who is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he drives a nice car and has a nice job, but just has no in integrity. Yeah, he's a football player, star football player, yeah. basketball player, but he doesn't have integrity. Yeah. And they um, are more like groupies instead mm -hmm. of knowing who they are mm -hmm. in Christ. Yeah. It's like it's they're the not thought. there yet. I, yeah. I remember, you know, when we were dating and stuff, um, people would maybe try to come up and talk to me and wouldn't have any game, like no personality or anything like that. So meaning that they were popular mm -hmm. and maybe athletic, you know, or something like that. And everybody knew who they were. And we're just sitting around like, uh, okay, well, bye. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's like, they're so used to people sweating them, mm -hmm. people coming up to them and doing all these things for them that mm -hmm. it's like, they, okay, you want me to do that? Okay. No, you're not for me. You don't know my value. You don't know my worth, or maybe you do, but you just haven't developed enough in your, mm -hmm. enough in your own character that mm -hmm. you know how to treat a woman wow. like me. Wow. Um, uh, just give them time, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, give them space. Mm -hmm. um, I would say so the popular person really necessarily isn't, you know, some popular people would be great, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the person who um, I would look for people, I would look at um, how they treat their friends. And so um, if you're uh, just hanging, you know, before you start dating, I don't know if you're just hanging out with people, um, if you are hanging out with his group of friends or even in conversation, mm -hmm. um, if, if is, are they a negative person? Mm -hmm. Do they believe in people? Mm -hmm. Like if something goes down in their friend's life, mm -hmm. or um, are they going to be like, see, because I told him not to do that and, da -da 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 and just tear him apart? Or are they, are you going to see them mm -hmm back up their friend? Mm -hmm. Are you going to see them fight for their friend? Mm -hmm. Are you going to see them pray for their friend? Mm -hmm. You know, so like, I don't know. I'm just looking mm -hmm. for how you respond in these situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was talking to my Uber driver uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and um, uh, I was trying to work and she was talking and I was like, oh my God, I was trying to work. She's talking. And then after a while, I said, I, I, I apologize. I got a podcast that I need to shoot tomorrow, and I need to kind of prepare for it. She said, what kind of podcast do you do? I said, I do a marriage relational podcast. She was like, oh, I was married once. And, oh. I, you know, she had this very negative tone towards marriage. Wow. Like she never wanted to get married again. And I was like, well, my podcast is not really just for married people. There are single people from around the world. I said, well, maybe you should check it out just for what, um, a relationship that might be coming in your future. She was, oh, okay, may maybe so. But it was amazing to me to see the negative tone that she had mm -hmm. towards marriage. What I mean is that she had a bad experience and then she wrote off the whole institution of marriage mm. as if she would never do that again because of one bad experience. Yeah. And so it led me back to this to say, okay, well, no, um, maybe you just didn't know what to look for when you got married. And in the Uber, she began to line for me. Well, he was like this, and he did this, and he did that. Okay, well, maybe you just didn't know what to look for. It's mm -hmm. not for you to write off that every man is that way. Yeah. It's that you just need to know what you're looking for. Absolutely. And then I went into the barbershop, and I decided, I said, hey, guys, I'm about to do a podcast, and I want to talk about the five things 
that a man should look for in a wife and the five things that a wife should look for in a husband. Next week, we'll hit the other one, of course. And so this week, of course, is about what a wife should look for in a husband. Mm-hmm. And I asked them, I said, so what, do, what are the five things that you look for in a wife? And, um, man, they just began to tell me about, I just look for someone who will encourage me and not beat me up and Aww. would have my back. And what concluded was that these men had been through things where yeah. they felt that they were tore down. They felt that they were beat down, that they were with women that felt it was their God-given right to tear them down. Mm-hmm. And so when we go into next week, as it relates to what kind of attributes you look for in a wife, um, we're going to talk about a woman who can build her house and not tear it Come down. Come on. Okay? But what it led me to believe is that this is huge mm-hmm. because a lot of people... Now, the one thing that the guys did not say mm-hmm. yesterday, and I had to lead them to this, is they didn't say, I'm looking for a, um, a God-first wife or I'm looking for someone who loves you. I had to in- interject that. Are you guys looking for someone who loves the Lord? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's it, Pastor. That's what we're looking for. Meaning that many guys have no clue. They're looking for the 32, six, whatever the shape is. They're looking for, does she have money? What kind of car? But they don't understand, does she pray for you? Absolutely. Does she love Jesus? And I just think that this podcast is so important because we need to know what to look for. Mm. And so, go ahead. You got something? I was just going to say, we're not in this episode yet, but the man that's looking for the God first wife. If you're looking for her, you know where you can find her in the church because <laughs> she's putting so. God first. She's in the church. Okay. She's serving somebody I, in know, church. I would say 100%, 90% of the time, 10% of the time there's somebody in church. I've seen people come to church and in a holy atmosphere and then find somebody else that has a problem with their flesh, just like you do. You got somehow people who want to fornicate can find each other, I, even in holy environments. I, see, I know. And it's like, are you, how in the world, out of all these thousands of people, <laughs> did you find some the one other person that would sleep with you? I can't believe oh that. Oh my goodness. And it's just like flesh will attract, just yeah. like spirit yeah. will. And so anyway, five qualities to look for in a husband. And so, I mean, we could go on and on. Okay. All right. And I like the way that you started out because we can go on and on with this quality and that quality and this quality and this quality. Mm-hmm. What I wanted to do was give women of God five points on a checklist. And and I can't say that these are the top five. These are my top five. These are the top five after 20 years of ministry and watching couples get married, get divorced, things happen in a relationship. These, I broke it down to these are the top five qualities from my opinion. These things are subjective. Okay. Qualities to look for in a husband. If you're ready, say I'm ready. All right. Number one, do you like his personality? Do you enjoy being with him? Okay, I think you hit that one. Mm -hmm. Are you guys friends? Mm -hmm. Does your personality mix well? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes women get involved with what he looks like. Is he in shape? You know, how much money does he have? But you forget, do you genuinely like each other? Yeah. So even like I'm a I'm a down low matchmaker at at heart. And, you know, sometimes I'll be trying to hook people up and stuff. But what I've realized, it's all about personality mixes, first and foremost. So we've been married, but we genuinely enjoy being around each other. Uh-huh. Now, anybody who watches our podcast, you'll know that we're really different. We, we like different things. We look at the world in a different way, but somehow it still complements each other. But at the end of the day, there's nobody else on the planet that I would rather spend time with mm-hmm. more than you. Isn't that important? Yeah. That many people feel like they're falling out of love, but I'm telling you, falling into like is a first step towards love. And I've learned that principle many years ago. If you're in a marriage and you feel like I've fallen out of love, why don't you first get back into like? Yeah. First, let, let's go to games together. Let's go to a basketball game together. Let's go ice skating together. Let's have a picnic in the park. Let's fall back into life mm-hmm. because if we can start liking each other again, that's a great step towards mm-hmm. loving each other again. Mm-hmm. And so being best friends, anything on that? Yeah, I find that, you know, uh, so we're talking to people who are not married yet. And I think you have a wonderful advantage right here (laughs) in being a friend with the man that you are going to marry Mm -hmm. and getting because when you're friends with him, now you know him and you like him and you know that before you get into the marriage. Now, we've counseled many women who they didn't become friends with their spouse before they were married. They had sexual relations and and they just loved it. It was very physical. But then. Then they got married and found out, oh, snap, we, we don't, don't like talk. each other. Yeah, now, that's a whole different scenario. You do not want to be in that situation. Now, 100%. we have a marriage boot camp for those people. We'll help them get we'll help them get over it. Yeah. But you have this awesome opportunity that in, before you even get married, before yeah. you even think about it, you're going to be friends with this person and know that you're compatible. That's like the show Love is Blind. 
And I watched the season and I stopped it. Then I watched it again. <laughs> the first season was the best. Okay. <laughs> but what happens is that these people, they fall in love emotionally. Mm -hmm. But we're missing very important aspects to the relationship development. Mm -hmm. We're missing the fact, do we like to be in the same room, how to yes. handle conflict, and a host of other things. Yes. We are falling in love with an image through a wall that we can't even see. Mm -hmm. It ain't even about, is this person going to be attractive? It's like... Can we be together 5, 10, 15, 35, 45 yes. years? Marriage is until death does you part. And you got to like each other, man. Yes. You got to like each other. And you can. You can actually grow in liking each mm -hmm. other, but it's going to take work. Number two, five qualities to look for in a husband. Is he committed to holiness? Mm. You said that one too. Yep. You, 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 you doing your thing, girl. Come on. Okay. What is holiness? That's when God's word says this and you submit your life to what God says. Amen. Holiness is birth. Holiness is not like I got to put on this long dress and take off my wake, my makeup. OK, holiness is first inside that manifests itself in the out, outside. It's not outside first. It's inside first that manifests itself mm -hmm. outside. It's just you. The word says this and you submit to it. The word says do this and you submit to it. That's holiness. That's good. And you have to ask yourself this question. Is your possible future husband is he a person who lives a holy life? Mm. This is so important for a husband because as you go through the years, there's so much temptation and there's so much compromise mm -hmm. that can come about. You are looking for a man of integrity. You are looking for a man of great character. Yes. You are looking for a man who is submitted to God's word. And no matter what it costs him, no matter how hard it is, he will go with God more than he goes with his flesh. Come on. Can you talk about that? I hear this mm -hmm. convictions. Yeah. Ooh. A man who is submitted to holiness mm -hmm. has convictions. Yeah. And so does he have any convictions mm -hmm. and is he, is he faithful to his convictions? Now, convictions aren't necessarily, you know, like you might have different convictions than me based mm -hmm. on our background mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, like you can, I might be able to watch a rated R movie. You might not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just an example. But does does he have convictions? Mm -hmm. And is does he feel strongly about his convictions? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that will really help you gauge, mm -hmm. you know, where 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 they are. And when I hear convictions, I'm not just hearing like convictions like we have these natural convictions. Yeah. I'm hearing like Will he allow the Holy Spirit to correct him and feel convicted? That's The good. Holy Spirit just saying, oh, no, that ain't for you. No, you shouldn't talk to her like yes. that. Oh, go and apologize. If you have a man that's spirit-led that way and is willing to get things right by the leading of the Holy Ghost, mm. there is so much landfill that he will be able to navigate through in life um, because of that. But holiness is huge. And I don't know, it's not the sexiest term, but it is so important. Just someone that really lives for God. Yeah. And I found out that there's a lot of people in churches nowadays that do not live holy. Mm. There's a lot of people, even in positions like leadership positions that do not live a holy life. Uh -huh. You want to stick with a person long enough to figure out, do they just have a talk or do they have a walk? Right. Here's number three, five qualities to look for in a husband. How does he handle pain? And how does he handle problems? Mm. That's huge. Because you won't know who a person is on the mountaintop. You will better know who they really are in the valley. And you have to just date long enough to see them go through a season. I'm not saying you got to go three, five years and wait on somebody to die. you know. But you do need to see how do they handle the loss of a job? How do they handle the loss of a loved one? How do they handle persecution mm. or offense? It can't just be all easy street where you never see how this person handles pain, persecution, and problems. You need to know that. So listen, in life, we're all going to have pain. Yeah. We're going to have problems at some point. And I need to know, does when pain, hits your, when pain hits you, does it send you back to drinking and back to drugging and back to the club mm -hmm. and back to pornography? Mm -hmm. Or does it send you to your knees, to fasting and praying, to the house of God, putting God first. Amen. You will not know until that pain shows up and how a person processes that pain says a lot about the success you will have in a marriage. Absolutely. Anything stick out on that no, one? No, that is so good. I think I would add just give the person enough time to go through these seasons. Yeah. Like if you've only known them for a year and everything's been great for a year and they've never had a problem, yeah. you probably want to give them some more time yeah. so that you can see yeah. how they walk through so the hard true. times. And we're not suggesting that you have to wait forever to get married. Yeah. Matter of fact, I feel like people are dating too long nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you've been dating for 10 years and you still ain't put a ring on it. 
maybe that's just not the one. Mm -hmm. You have a fear of commitment, something's wrong. Right. But you need to not be so short that you move so quickly that you forgot to figure out how this person processes all the different parts of life. Yeah. And so number four, this is a big one, five qualities to look for in a husband. How does he submit to godly authority? Mm. And that's huge. Now, let me unpack with this one for a minute. Um, listen, woman of God, you need to see how he submits to godly authority. Because if he's like, I'm the man, and nobody can tell me what to do, that means that when you go through a bad place in your marriage, he's not coming in for counseling. Because he's going to say, I won't put my business in the street because pride has his heart. See, you need a man. All men need other men. Okay. Now, all men need to be submitted to some kind of authority to be, also be an authority. And so you want to see how does he handle his relationship with mm-hmm. his mother? How does he handle his relationship with his father? How does he handle his relationship with his employer? Is he from job to job every mm-hmm. two months, three months? Is he from church to church? Does he not? He say stuff like, I just don't believe in organized religion. Let me translate that for you. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I want to do whatever I want to do. And so if you are a Christian, we're submitting one to another. We have spiritual leadership and authority in our lives. And you can tell a lot about the temperature of a man's heart. Is he pliable? Is he teachable? Is he moldable? Now, let me tell you. You might think that that doesn't matter at all right now, but when you go through a storm in mm-hmm. five years and 10 years and 15 years, you're going to make need to make sure that this man is able to get some help. There's somebody else that can speak into his blind spots because those are the things that are going to ha- yep. cause you to have long-lasting relationships. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think how does he respond to the authority that's in your life? What does he say about your church, about your pastors? What does he say oh, about your parents? No. What does he say about, you know, the the people that are close in your life? I cannot tell you. I mean, it hasn't been a ton of people, right. but there have been a few people that it. we have counseled in the past that they have been a part of our church and uh-huh. pillars in the church, yes. just serving and wonderful, beautiful people. But they got together with someone who and, and women uh-huh. who met a man going to another church and um, they he came into the church and hated the church, hated the pastors. Why do you have, and just nitpicked everything and kind of just took her away from her family, Uh the people who had prayed for her for the last five years and uh, served with her for the last five five years, the people who had been a part of her life and then isolate her. So it's just her and him. And then, you know, who knows what happens after that, but that's not good. Well, what we found is that many times those men have a high tendency to be abusive later on Mm -hmm. because they're trying to isolate the woman and get her away from all authority and people that would protect her. So what they do is they come and they find a young woman who's in the church and for a season they like it until they're corrected or something and then they begin to bash. And their goal is really to cause that young woman to fall in love and then move her to another church, isolating her, getting her away from protection, authority, counsel, mm-hmm. and everything good that has been mm-hmm. in her life so that they can do whatever they want right. to do. And we don't want that for you, but it's something very common. So here's our advice to you, and you can take it or leave it, but here's our advice. Our advice is if you are a person who's plugged in a local church, Mm -hmm. your life has been changed in that church, you love that church with every fiber of your being. If someone that you're dating starts to hate that church, talk negatively of that church, and criticize that church, that might not be the person for you. That should be a super red flag that, number one, we are not going to go the same spiritual direction that we are not going to be in the same spiritual flow, that we don't believe the same things. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people are divorced because they just don't believe the same things? And listen, you would say, well, he loves God. He just wants to go to another church. Yeah, but there's legalism, there's religiosity, there's wrong doctrine, there's wrong control. He wants to suffocate the woman. There are so many different things that you don't see that God is using your Mm -hmm. church to protect you. That does not mean that you can't go to another church. If you are dating somebody from another church, And he comes and he's like, man, I love this place. Man, this is so good. But I just really feel called over here. Well, that might be a season where you can go and have your pastors pray over you and they can release you to go with your husband and go to another church. But what's that? You can come back to conferences and love on your church and pray for your church. What we're talking about is that dogmatic criticism and anger. That is not God. And it is a huge red flag. And a key that you said is just the leadership in your church. You know, there are people, there's your pastors, there's leaders that know 
you mm -hmm. and have a history with you. And they you. done walked with you longer than this dude yeah. who showed up last month. I ask for their <laughs> counsel and their guidance. And if they're like, hey, I don't know about this one. Hey, I think you should pray about this. Hey, I think you need to put the brakes on this. Slow down and trust them. You've trusted them the last several years. They have nothing to gain from telling you the truth. You know, We just saved somebody's life. Praise the Lord. We just saved somebody's life on that one. Um, number five, here's the last five qualities to look for in the husband. Does he have a real love for God? Mm -hmm. And I put this one last because it's actually first. Mm -hmm. The first should be last and the last should be first. Does he have a real love for God? Not mm -hmm. does he go to church. Not does he own a Bible. Not does he serve as an usher. Yeah. Does he have a passion for Jesus? Does he have a fervency for the things of God? Mm -hmm. Does he have a worship life without you being around? Does he have a prayer life? Does he go to God when you're nowhere around? Would he come to church if you were on vacation? Is he sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Um, does he have a real love for God? This is my greatest advice that I give married people. Find somebody who loves God more than they love you. Because if they love God more than they love you, God would always help them love you better. Mm. But a lot of people find people that love them more than they love God. Yeah. And they make you an idol and they get their happiness for you. Darling, that's going to run out. And so you want to find a man. And listen, um, they're a little bit harder to come by. We have a man. Well, listen, we're going to focus on the man. We're going to raise up real mighty men of Amen. valor around here. But unfortunately, Satan has done a really good job confusing men. But I'm telling you, you would rather be single and satisfied than married and miserable. Come on. And there's a lot of people that overlook red flag after red flag after red flag because they just, my biological clock is ticking and I need somebody. No, you can do bad by yourself. And, and listen, you are worth the wait. Mm -hmm. And listen, you being single is not a disease. Come on, somebody. You being single, Paul was single. Jesus was single. You do not have to be married right. to be fulfilled. Right. I think that we've put placed almost too much on marriage. Mm -hmm. We've almost made marriage an idol. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't be happy and I can't have joy until I'm married. Mm -hmm. The devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you feel that way, don't get married. Because when you get married and you think you're going to get joy and happiness getting married, I'm telling you now... <laughs> That, that ain't true at all. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we've placed almost too much emphasis on the marriage. And there's so many single people feeling like they don't belong or they're not good enough till they find somebody. No, that's not true. Wow. You can fulfill the call of God on your life. You can be about your father's business. There's so much that you can do. Now, we, we honor the marriage. Y'all know we do. Absolutely. We love helping married people. But God knows being single is not less than being married. You are chosen. You are precious in the eyes of God. You need to find somebody that loves mm. God. Amen. Anything else on that? No, I agree 100%. What do you think about these five? Um, I think this is good. I think it's a, uh, I mean. Notice what I didn't say. In my top five, wasn't his six pack, wasn't his biceps or his triceps. Physical characteristics. He has to be six two. Yeah, it wasn't. He had making six figures. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that he was driving a Maserati or a new Tesla. Mm. Now all those things might be good. He owns a home. <laughs> yeah, none of that. That didn't make my top five. He has three avenues of income. Why? Why did it not make my top five? Because if he's committed to holiness and he is under godly authority, has a love for God, etc., mm -hmm. he'll get six figures. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll 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 he'll, he'll get those things. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, what I'm saying if he has God leading him. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll steward his body better. Yeah. And I think sometimes we make a minor a major, and I think we need to make a major a major and a minor a minor. And I think sometimes we look for in a husband things that are not eternal or that are natural and that are going to vanish after 15, 20 years mm -hmm. instead of looking for the root of things. Yeah. Somebody who's going to be a covering for me and my kids. Someone who's going to love me like Christ loved the church. Somebody whose their word is their bond. Someone who has integrity and character and is going to lead people into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And then, watch this, that should be attractive to you. Mm -hmm. You know, If you give me a man who has a six-pack, and who's somebody, a guy who's real fine? Like, I mean, they got Ken it. Clater. <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm, I'm going to go Michael B. Jordan. Okay, like somebody who, I mean, you know, Creed. I mean, like, you know, he, he's cut. You know what I'm saying? Give me that kind of guy versus somebody who's got a dead bod but know how to pray, cast out a devil, raise the dead with his faith, Come on. walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Listen, 
the average woman is going for Michael B. Jordan. You gonna Brad get tired Pitt, of that? Whoever that dude is. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm telling you now. If you had to choose, go with the dead bod that knows how to move heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just saying that's the way that you got to go, mm-hmm. and that's just that's a light, that's a revelation, mm-hmm. isn't it? I think you know <laughs> what I would do if I were single because I I hear a lot of women struggle with this. I would ask, it's like, okay, God, I have uh, an image in my mind mm-hmm. of what my husband will look like. I have this perception of you know what he what he will be like, <laughs> God. I know that you give me the desires of my heart. However, Lord, I'm going to submit that vision to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to submit those desires to you and that perception to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to give you permission to change that perspective, to allow me to see through spiritual eyes, Mm -hmm. allow me to see what's right for me and what's good for me. Mm -hmm. Because what I've seen is that, you know, I've had friends, you know, that aren't married and, you know, I, you know, we've been together for a really long time and stuff like that. And I've seen, you know, them go from relationship to relationship mm-hmm. um, and still not be married. But I've seen them maybe go for a type, mm-hmm. type after type after type. And they never they don't work out. Mm-hmm. And and I've suggested, well, maybe you should try this person. Oh, no, I don't like that. No, I don't. But it was all based on physical characteristics mm-hmm. and what you think this vision of what you what they are going to look like. Look, they could be another skin color. You might be believing for a white man and your husband is a black man. You might be believing for a brown man and your husband is a yellow man. Like ask God, submit your desires and submit that vision and that perception that you have, submit it to God and say, God, this is what I want. But nevertheless, your will be done. Nevertheless, God, I want to submit and have the man that you've you know, that kind you of made for me that, that, that you, that you made me for me that you would want. Cause I don't, you know, there's not one, you know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to say that, but mm-hmm. God, sh- you know, what's best for me. Yeah. I submit to that. Yeah. That was good. That was real good. Thank you for that, man. We're out of time mm-hmm. for the day, but I hope you got blessed by today. If so, we want to hear from you. Leave us a review, leave us some comments, share this with other single people who might need it. Next week, we're going for five qualities to look for in a wife. I need you to get your boyfriends, wow. uncles, fathers, cousins, and every man that you can think of that is not married and make sure that he tunes in with us next Thursday and that you share this with other people as well, because this will decrease the divorce rate, knowing what we're looking for. Come Praise God. All right, guys, we love you guys. If you're new to our podcast, man, welcome to the family. We want to do life with you. We release a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. If you hit the subscribe button, you can be the first to get the content when it is released. We have two great things that are happening in this season. Number one is the Better Marriage Boot Camp. We've designed a 90-day, 12-part boot mm-hmm. camp to help you have better sex, have Um, family meetings, communicate with each other. There's so many different things. We actually have a 90-day Devo that we do where we walk with you in your marriage for 90 days every single day, giving you a scripture to be able to meditate on. There is so much that is a part of this boot camp, and we want to get it into your hands. For more information, go over to our website at kenandtabitha.com or the bettermarriagebootcamp.com or the link that is in our show notes. Um, You can also, if you want to come join us for 25-year anniversary, we are renewing our vows. She don't want to do it, but I don't care because do, we are going I'm to celebrate it. 25 years of marriage on July the 3rd, and we would love to have you be a part of it. Not even sure if tickets are still available, but get them while supplies last. It's going to be a black tie affair. All of the proceeds are going to go to help other people overcome cancer. Yes. It's going to be a night like no other. All right. Just know that you're cherished, you're loved, you're appreciated, and we're praying for you. And remember that when you get better, the marriage gets better. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.